All right, what's up, everybody? Thanks so much for joining me on the Super Manny Super Podcast. Um, we're here interviewing different um, super creators and creatives of all types, um, whether it's in business or just the personal arts. And today I have a really, really, really exciting guest, which is a good friend of mine. And his name is Jem. Jem, what's up, brother? What's up? Good morning. Yeah, definitely good morning. So, Jem, when was the last time we actually saw each other? Uh, dude, it's been a while, man. Um, damn, I want to say that one that one trip we did to New York as a group. Was possibly? that? I think so. It might be. Yeah, I think it when was. I broke my lens and then Manny fixed it right after I bought a new one. Oh, yeah, when he smashed it. Well, <laughs> like, you know, did that, that thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was... My God. Did it work the same since that day? Yeah, it's been working. Oh, okay. The 1855 well, is, is key. Well, that's one thing I like about Manny, bro. He knows how to finesse anything when it comes to gear, um, no, you know, the, just just everything. So I, I would imagine he'd be the one to fix it. <laughs> but I tr that's the thing. I tried fixing it the same way, and I put all the pressure, and I was like, forget it. It breaks. It breaks. But he was just you're like, not, you're not him, bro. He knows yeah. how to finesse. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm Manny, but not that Manny. So. <laughs> sure. All right. So, James, so really quick, actually, what I wanted to know or introduce is. What have you been working on lately? What kind of projects? So for those who don't know, Jem is an amazing photographer, but he's not just a photographer, he's a creative in general. So what you been up to, man? Uh, not much, dude. I was, truth be told, I've slowed down a lot of stuff. I'm um, just trying to really get focused on like what I want to do exactly. But for photography, I mean, like recently, Manny and I, we took a trip to the city, you know, just, just taking some photos and stuff. Not to okay. be confused with Super Manny, whole different guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to a Sony event, so we were over there hanging out, you know, you know, just taking in the environment, seeing all the new stuff, new lenses, sets up, setups and everything. Um, so it's cool. But aside from that, man, I mean, just really, I don't know, I don't really have that 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 much of a real real super creative vibe lately so i've been trying to dive into different stuff so i'm trying to help my boy like get the visuals for his music get the marketing type stuff going down okay um just trying to get into a different type of inspired field there's a lot of creators i follow that um they definitely put out dope content that i'll say that i mean it, it's inspiring it's just i want to dive into it but if you know me i'm a very technical guy so i never want to dive into anything until i'm really like sure about it mm -hmm. but it was nice picking up a camera you know uh last week like really getting back into it you know i almost felt like a kid again in the candy store just taking photos of everything yeah, yeah. um so yeah man no really big projects there but i mean every single day i'm always looking at how to get better with a lot of things like dodging and burning shadowing mm -hmm. um just really trying to understand more the basics because i feel like no matter what happens every day there's always a different situation when you shoot so with that said you know anything you learn has to do with lighting it, it's almost like it can never get old you know yeah Okay. Um, but yeah, man, to answer that, nothing, nothing too crazy, you know. That's a funny thing. That's actually why I, I wanted to talk to you is because of all the different things that I know. Your style is like, most people are technical or they say they're technical, but your style is like the definition of like technical. <laughs> but it's in, in a good way because I know that you have such a creative process such a deep process of like what you're going into because you already know the outcome so even the temperature of the light if you're going to use a second light if you're gonna the clothing the model is wearing or whatever like you already have that vision so you go into it like like checking off you know the list and then you you do the shot if it's not that like you won't even go into it so could you explain like what that process is and like why you personally that's your flow and what makes you comfortable yeah so and i don't know man there's a lot of uh, a lot of like beforehand process in the shot for me like it's always like you said it comes down to lighting for colors mood it comes down to i feel like a lot more now that a lot of people don't do especially a lot of the work i see is just like thinking what to do beforehand what you're really trying to get in the concept of and even myself i know i i struggle a good amount like really trying to get the feel for it and then in post you just try to I feel like we try to make it something that it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? And just try mm -hmm. to like birth it, which, which isn't bad, but I think more conceptually now, it, it definitely, uh, it gives you the edge over anything else, you know? So colors to me matter a lot. I'm a really big color guy. 
Um, but recently I've been, a lot of the people I look up to, they're more muted tones. So I'm messing with the muted tones, not to necessarily go after muted tones, but, you know, just really understand that avenue and lane. Cause I'm still trying to discover what I like the most. Yeah. And a lot more like the natural stuff I've been getting into, but dude, colors play a, a really big part. Um, you know, just trying to understand, I have this whole book of color that I was reading into on how color affects like emotions. Um, even when people see stuff in cinema, I mean, you as a videographer, you know, you know, that a lot of different colors and moods and movies, they really, it all plays a really big role and you never know what's going on, you know, so the technicalities are definitely big. Yeah. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm technical, sometimes too technical, but I think in the end result, when I, when I am satisfied with something, it shows for it. And that's really a big reason why I haven't posted anything too much aside from like little things I work on to keep my, you know, keep the sharpness up. But aside yeah. from that, um, just really trying to get technical and put something out. Cause I think a lot of people forget too, that the internet is something that's not forgiving real. Once it's out, can't get rid of it. it's, there, yeah. it's out there somewhere, you know, uh, and trust there's always ways to find anything. So with that said, I never want to put work out or put anything out with tweet, um, you know, a story. I don't think that I I try to do something with, and some people think that's too technical for that, you know. But again, it's social media, man. I don't want my work to be a projection of something that I just threw together real quick and then draw in that type of person who likes the work that I didn't even like as much, you know. Yeah. Okay. So there's a few points that you mentioned there. So the first one about color is yeah, a lot of people don't understand the importance and how strongly color affects whether you like something or you don't like something i like think about it, like when you go buy a t-shirt like i'll buy a shirt if i see it black white maybe red but like a green i won't get the shirt and it's gonna be the oh, same yeah. shirt you know and even yeah, like man, you mentioned like in movies, um i remember when they did the matrix documentary and they showed that mm -hmm. when they were in the matrix it had a blue hue and when they were out no yeah when they were outside the matrix it was blue when they were in the matrix it was all green hue and right. like me watching the movie makes perfect sense, so you know exactly what world they're in. You know, and yeah, that, absolutely, like, man. That, that color, even though it's like so subtle, it definitely plays a lot. And even in photography, like you said, like I do like color, but as much as I've tried to get that like oversaturation, that bright, that you know, that vibrant kind of look, like it never plays out for me. Like even though I want to and I enjoy it in other people's work. It doesn't reflect my work you know so mine is more of like how many colors can i subtract and just leave the few that are actually important to that picture kind of like uh separating right separating background foreground model using those colors or not using the colors you know so that's definitely big and so another thing that you mentioned about social media so i actually wanted to get into this topic is like you said you won't put out work because the internet is unforgiving. So this week I asked, you know, are, are people creating for themselves or are they creating for others? So then what's your, your viewpoint on that? Because I'm right now I'm like in a situation where I'm like fighting with myself, but I think I made a decision. So what's, what's your take? <laughs> no, yeah. So I saw that, man. So I think that's, uh, that's one of those questions that it's, uh, it's very opinionated based because you'd be told, I mean, there's never a right answer for things like that. It's the same thing when you dive into politics, religion, chicken and the egg, you know. Um, it all comes down to you personally, man. There's so many things out there I think that I see in different people's work, no matter what they are. They're artists for music, they're artists for, you know, photography, videography. And dude, honestly, like, I, I think there is no true right answer because people will put out work. And, you know, when you look back at some of your favorite people's work, there's, there's just so much, like, so, many, so much work that you know that they know now that they're better. But in that point, they had to have put out the content. You know what I mean? And then there's some yeah. people that they'll reserve and try to put the best they can out. Yeah. But it's it's different, man. So if, I don't know if there's a true definitive answer on where I stand. I mean, personally, from my opinion, I just want to like put out what I feel is best to it. But um, I don't think I'm really thinking about people at the end of the day as far as like what their feedback is. It's just that, well, dude, when I, I edit on multiple things, I'll be on a computer screen, my iPad, my phone. And I know on different viewing uh, displays, like colors and everything come different, even when yeah. calibrated, just from who's viewing it. That's super annoying. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I want to make sure, like, I'm pleased with how it looks across the board. So, dude, I'll look at how it looks, like, on every display and make sure I like the colors for it. Um, just because I know at the end of the day, I want it to be viewed as something good. That could be, again, 
people based, but I know when it comes to reality, if I was going to print it or everything, I mean, we create to put out there, man, you know? So yeah. it, uh, it kind of is, you know, for the people. I'm not going to lie. That's just, it's, it's a factor. If not, it's social media, you know? So it's yeah, supposed to be just keep it on your desktop and just enjoy it. Exactly, you know? So if not, like, uh, truth be told, we all put out for someone, but I know before I hit, you know, that send, that submit, that publish, like for me, I have to be satisfied with it. And that's just a hundred percent. So I put it out to the world because I want to make sure what I put out is going to be what I really am a hundred percent definitive on. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes I know myself, like I don't have as much love, as much like following as, you know, photographer X, Y, Z. Like we know that we notice these things like Manny and I, mm -hmm. since we're super close, we talk all the time about things. You know, we got people there. Sometimes it's just who you know. And at that point, that's them. You know, they do their own lane. Um, but again, for me personally, dude, I put it out for me because again, if I'm not happy with it, there's a lot of stuff I'm sitting on that I just don't put out, you know? Yeah. Um, but I got to be content with it, you know, if I really put it out into the world. Of course. That's just me, man, because it's almost like a legacy. Again, once it's out there, it's out there. Um, but I don't care, man. I mean, I can get zero likes, 50 likes. But when I look and back at it, it's like my gallery. Out. Yeah, my, my whole feed. I want to make sure I like my feed. Like when you screenshot my feed, shout out to you, and you put it out, you know, for people to see. I was good. glad I looked at that feed. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, you know what? Who is that guy? I'm like, oh, that's me. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, it was good. And, and um, that's actually one reason why I, I screenshotted the feed exactly, because I've seen other people, and I'm like, I can't do nothing with this. But yours, yeah, that's another you know, thing, man. Consistent. And, you know, like, you know uh, me, I'm, like, transitioning. My feed is all over the place, and I'm just at a point where, like, I don't care. Like, if you're gonna if you're gonna support or follow, it's because of who I am, and like in the creative journey. Um, <laughs> I hear that's you. that's kind of like why I'm not like so worried about like curation and things like that. Just because I know I'm I'm still transitioning. It's not just a photography page anymore. You know, it's like my current work or what I'm thinking or what I'm going through and like if you want to connect with me you know type of thing oh yeah absolutely man you know I, I think it's very beautiful to see like when your feed goes from all the way to the bottom it's like uh, and then you go all the way to the top and you see the progression so yeah. I think at that point it's it's good but um again for me like if I put out the stuff on my feed that is like you know in the moment what I think is the best you know then I look back and I know at the present time you know compared to now it'd be less you know good than what it was um but you know looking back at it i'm like in that moment i just want to have that feeling that when i upload i don't upload just to upload you know like i'll look back and i'll be like at that moment i really thought this was good you know so i know i'm, I'm on it because if not i feel like i personally i can use a timeline as like a way to measure the progress you know and just how it's gotten better true 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 that's true um but again if i just put out whatever all over the place i'll never know like you know no, what no, i was no, really no. <laughs> going through you know so there's nothing bad about that again, because some people can use that and just be like, "Oh, damn! Like I used to, I used to do this. Like I used to do that." Like again, it's it's all personal how you take it. But I know if I look back, I'll be like, "At that person, I really thought I was at that moment in time. I'm sorry, I really thought that that was really good." And if I see it now as I transition better, then I'm like, "Okay, cool." So I know my thinking, you know, and my how I observe things is getting better too. That's yeah, nice. for sure. No, but that's good. I mean, it's you know, and that's something I really I wanted to like talk to other creators about because it's. It's evident, like you can see there's some people who are just like all over the place and then there's some that like very curated and um, even one creative director that I follow, um, he mentioned that like, if you're gonna like, you technically don't have to post every day because you want your feet to look the best. And when people visit you, they have five seconds to decide whether they're gonna follow you, whether they like your work or they don't like your work. You know, they can yeah, say dude, quick the grid is very but underrated. Say, but he did mention that if you to continue to have that engagement and continue to like, you know, stay up with the following to just use Insta stories with your throwaways and your things like that. So you can post your day to day, you know, like your everyday post um, through the Insta story and then like your good or best work or, you know, whatever you're currently working on, then you can post in your stories however many times you want, you know. So when I heard that, I, I was like, you know, it makes sense because it's true. You got throwaway footage. Like whoever's following you within those 24 hours, like they're going to see what you're working on. It's not going to live forever. And it's not going to start like your image as a creator. You know, like I made that story the other day with like my breakfast, you know, and it was like 
it was just a stupid idea I had in the morning, but I was just like, let me see what kind of engagement it gets. And it's something that I can put out for people to enjoy periodically, but it's not something I would post on my feed. You know? True, true. That's how I feel like, dude, I, I think there's definitely certain elements to, to social media where I try to stay creative and I know I can post in a space that's safe in a way, you know, mm -hmm. like um, a lot of the stuff, depending on how I shoot it, because I really want to shoot for an Instagram crop. A lot of people don't. And I think yeah. that's a, that's a big thing. Like, again, your feed is whatever you want it to be, you know, but I feel like the, uh, the Instagram crop size that gives you the max image is just using the best real estate from it. So if I feel like I don't shoot it to the crop that's more, you know, fitting of it, I'll post it like on my story. So I have like a lot of highlights on my story that mm -hmm. is a throwaway content for myself that I'm pleased with, you know, like basically second tier, just cause it won't fit for framing, but everything else I like, you know? Yeah. And some people don't like that. Some people feel like the framing for IG is just like, it's wishy-washy, you know, like they don't want to crop for Instagram or they don't want to like kind of abide to the Instagram like rules because it's like a little more constricting. But dude, if it's the social media, you got to learn how to, you know. Yeah, that's, 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 that's good that you brought that up because I've also been like cropping more for Instagram and of course, when I'm shooting, like, you know, I fill up my frame, I'm always checking, but then, like, the only thing or backdrop that I see is if I shoot for the IG crop, that means I'm technically going to have to step away from my subject, and that's going to be a, just a little difference in focus and um, you know, resolution, at, resolution at the end. So that's why I feel like if I shot this at this distance and I filled up the frame how I wanted, I'm going to get the full resolution of that shot. But if I'm thinking IG, I'm going to step a little bit back and then it's like not the same sharpness and like, you know, it's like little details that really like for other people will make a difference, but that's like what oh, goes on well, in my I mind. Mean, if we're on here talking about this, there's tons of tips and tricks dude, to work around that. That's the beautiful thing, you know? So I mean, if you need it, I will definitely share share a couple of those tips that I've noticed that, you know, okay. I've also been helped with. Again, super big reference. Uh, I'm here for it. Yeah, super big reference, Manny. One of my, my biggest people that talks to me about that because I'm not going to lie, bro. I am in the, I'm classified in the zone that I am very bad at cropping. Like, that's just how it is. I'm, I'm horrible at cropping. So I'm the same like you. I film my frame, try to make everything look good, try to pregame in the mind. Like, all right, I frame it like this. I step back like this so I can crop, you know, this. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what resolution or what uh, what sizing I should say that you shoot in your camera. Uh, you know, just for what the the ratio is. But I'm pretty sure for mine, I shoot sixteen by nine. Yeah, I switch back and forth from sixteen by nine, four by three. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, right now shooting sixteen by nine, I found that as long as you leave like enough headspace on top, like just emptiness in the zone, and you can stay within the same focus. Yeah. The width is the same. It just comes down to cropping the height, cropping which the when height, you yeah. hit that four by five for IG, it'll naturally mm -hmm. get rid of the top. That's pretty much one thing, one word of advice Manny's giving me in which I noticed that when he posts on his story, his stuff versus on his, uh, his actual image, like it's basically the same image. It's just missing that negative space, you know? Um, so yeah, that's, that's one thing, man. Shooting with, uh, with that right size in camera and just leaving space at top because really everything from, your subject down if you want it you know it's kind of an easy rule to remember you don't have to back up you don't have to worry about cropping in it's just really that piece on top yeah. and then if it really comes to focus i mean i know you're big on photoshop and the tutorials you put on youtube but um just do just doing minimal sharpening small pixels um to the important areas hard edges exporting with the right settings i mean um right. that's all it is man you just got to know again being technical the ins and outs of like instagram as far as like what resolution they want that works. Yeah, yeah. um yeah, just, just because, you know, some people don't like it and they just want to, you know, just boop, upload. But the better mega, better resolution, more megapixels you have, the more when you upload on IG, it just constrains and, like, looks sloppy. You know, it's trying to put, like, a lot of information in this little box from what it restrains yeah, you to. I know, you I know. know a lot. So it's like, big, man. No matter what you do, you can't escape it, you know. Yeah, so there's definitely, I mean, I think so I saw that one video of, like, Mango Street. They explained them the best export you know for instagram and stuff like that yeah there's a lot of tips and tricks on exporting and honestly there's probably three or four different ways that i think i've seen it um i got my own method i mean it's it's like a tedious thing but you know when you post again it's just nice that when you'll zoom into there 
you'll see that it just looks how you want it, like the max it is, you know. Because truth be told, if you're really going to post on social media, another fun fact, you don't need a high megapixel count because of that, um, you know, like that Instagram, like crop and like squishing of your information. Yeah. Um, so like that portrait I took of you a while ago, that's in my story. Um, I shot that with a crop sensor lens that technically gives looks crisp but that's because since we're working with smaller megapixels you don't have to worry about all those details you know exactly. um, so as long as it looks sharp everything's good i polish it up with a little bit of a little sharpening on the edges here like just where the details matter when yeah. i upload it and everything like it doesn't have to shrink so much so it's basically where it needs to be right there you know yeah. and, and sometimes like, it's just I about the it. image you know i definitely notice when i see like your portraits and stuff like that and i'm just like you know he uploads it to Instagram, but you still get like the sharpness and like things are there. Like I noticed it and it's there. And then I'm just like, if I were to upload that same image, I guarantee you. You look beautiful in that portrait I shot of you. <laughs> bro, that same picture, I, I always keep it in my mind. And I'm just like, the, like the sharpness and everything, like it's just, it fit like perfectly. Like there's, you know, something in there. And I'm like, if I did the same thing, I know I would be losing some type of like information there'll be some blur that i don't want or like some sharpness that's like uh, and you gotta think about like the real the real uh like pre slash post processing of it bro like remember people always forget too we shoot raw you know so our our goal is to shoot with information so we can recover everything afterwards you know you set the tone you set the mood that's what all this is for and if you want to keep it natural you just got to keep that in your mind when you edit something that the rawness is not necessarily natural but when it comes to the details, like I said, man, it's just um, sometimes for portraits, I find like now recently just to, to tone back on details and portraits just where it matters, you know? Yeah. Um, one of my favorite portraits, I think, is one either after yours or somewhere there in my story of uh, this dude named Tony. He's like an oldish guy in Newark, but like, dude, all the wrinkles in his face, oh, there's oh, yeah, yeah, motion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Again, dude, I shot that on a crop sensor lens that degraded my megapixel count to probably like 11, 12 megapixels. But the compression I got from it for it being a crop sensor lens, and just that amount of megapixels, like I said, to upload to IG or something for social media, it doesn't give you much space. Perfect. Obviously, oh, if you yeah. deliver it to a client, you want to blow it up big, that's where you got to go the other route. But you got to remember for Instagram, dude, that's why a lot of people that post, even if it's just like on an iPhone, like, dude, you don't need that much aside from like, you know, good framing uh, for people, good emotions, post editing, good color, just balancing. But the megapixel count almost is useless at that point, just because for social yeah, media. It's only, it's only for print. You know? And that's what like- Yeah, exactly. People... Wait, it's, okay, I'm gonna say this. It's for print and for editing. Yeah, exactly, so depending, man. Depending like, on, um, on your editing style, if you're, if you're big into the details of the, of the eyes, the skin texture, like that's what the megapixel counts. But I know a ton of like iPhone photographers or so, you know, mobile photographers, and the pictures are great because they shoot knowing the limitation of the phone, knowing the focus distance, knowing like when it looks good. And I tell people like all the time, I'm like you can take great pictures, but you have to know like the limitations, you have to know what's the best distance, all these things. And if you're gonna edit, you gotta know like how far you can push it. Yeah, exactly, man. That's why I think over time, I've slowed down on caring about gear. Cause dude, I think I have enough gear to work with what I have. And once again, using Manny as another reference, just cause he's a dude that works off very minimal gear, bro. Like this man has a, a screen on his DSLR that doesn't work. You know, like he's got a film camera that he just gets to get to develop and, you know, post on social media, minimal edit, bro. And still does amazing work with probably yes. the most bare bones equipment you have, you know? But again, it just comes down to learning a lot of the stuff when it comes to like the lighting, the more information, like you said, um, the better. And again, we're posting on IG, man, you know, or we're posting on Twitter. We're posting uh, on social media platforms where they don't give you as much space as opposed to like a website to upload information, you know, for your images. Yeah, so it's not really a big deal. It's, right. it's other factors. Yeah, it's other factors that come into play, man. You know, like I said, uh, framing, emotion, color, like those things resonate when you scroll through a feed. Like you said, when you scroll through a feed, you got five seconds. A colorful feed tends to bring more people. Themed feeds, you know, whether it's uh, color, nature travel whatever it may be tend to be like a universal thing where people go find a home to you know yeah um so there's there's tips and tricks on on making stuff like crispy you just got to know like what area you're working with again you kind of have to abide to instagram a little bit but by posting onto its platform 
you want to know how to get the best out of whatever you're using, you know, again, whether it's like a new camera, uh, your base level camera, your phone. And then if you want to invest in stuff, like I recently have gotten like a moment lens for my phone. I haven't used it too much, you know, but I know there's going to be cases where I'll be able to, um, towards the end of last year, I went on a helicopter ride, took my lens, didn't rent anything. Uh, got some pretty good images out of it. I put it in my story too. But, you know, just trying to really understand in those environments and learn, like, what to post, where I'm putting it, to the to a point that, it, like, dude, it, it might not even matter to a degree, you know? It's like the the gear doesn't matter type of scenario, you know? So that's definitely, I get that. And, like, I recently I've been getting into that, like, I've been switching my mindset because... At first, I would worry about like gear, what I'm recording on, how it's gonna look, and of course, like in the technical aspect, we as the creatives know what kind of look comes from what kind of gear. We know oh yeah, that. absolutely. But the, but the other day, I was I was just recording with my iPhone, and I was just looking at it, you know, like just like, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> iPhone actually does a lot better. I'm gonna say this video than it does photo. Oh yeah, in, I mean in that sense. Right, in that sense of like comparing, like, you know, what whether you use it for photo or video. And then I I spoke to Anthony about it and I was just like, I was like, you know, I, I can pass with like just doing like iPhone video and like getting you know, the content like from there. And then I showed him two clips and I was like, oh, if you see this, do you tell if it's, you know, shot on the iPhone, shot on the DSLR? And his response like blew me out the water because he said, I don't care. <laughs> and I'm not think and he said I'm not thinking about that. Well yeah, man, absolutely. Because yes. um yeah, iPhone, dude, today in, in today's world, a lot of modern equipment, whatever it is, phone, um, uh, you know, camera, they definitely they they do the job, man. All it comes down to is again the technical factors, lighting, um, stabilization for video. Like, dude, I, I'll I'll definitely vote an iPhone stable shot just because it, it's got a good processing like, you know, like unit inside of it on just how it, yeah. it does everything over like a shaky DSLR, you know what I mean? Just because you notice that right away, man. Like if, if someone shot listening to Dark Knight and it was shaky, dude, you'd notice that right away, you know? But when everything just is done I'm naturally. <laughs> I'm the slow yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, I can only imagine. It's already a dark movie, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Um, no, but, so like, but the, good, the thing is, like, the, the point I wanted to make on that is that the consumer is not thinking about gear. They're thinking about, what am I looking at? Oh, that's a dog. That's a coffee cup. That's all they're, they're worrying about. They're not worrying about, oh, was it shot on red? Was it shot on a DSLR? Is it full frame? Is it, yeah, I think, you know, it's dude, just yeah, I think in those, the story. oh, yeah, absolutely. I think in those aspects, like, it, it's, it's, you have to be on a very far end of either spectrum to really notice that. Like, dude, if you shoot something on a red camera and you know what you're doing, someone's going to know I'm on a very high piece of tech just from like the color grading, the sim, like, those cameras are on a whole nother level. You'll notice, you know, like when you watch a movie, you don't think a movie's filmed with a DSLR. You don't think I'm gonna buy a DSLR and film this movie, just exactly. the way a movie is, you know? There's a lot more that goes into it. Or you're on the very low end of the spectrum and you're shooting with a potato and you're like, yeah, I can tell he's shooting with a potato and I really care, you know? <laughs> but um, the in-betweens, like the iPhone, DSLR, yeah. As long as you um you execute properly, no one's gonna care. And just like every content creator says, like the biggest thing I think for video is story. And then for images, it's just like subject and honestly, sometimes color for people, man. Like there's some people that I've looked up reviews for lenses and stuff that they don't actually like bokeh because they feel that uh, it almost like, unless you do it right, again, where you can tell is a DSLR thing. Like if you do um, an iPhone bokeh versus like a, uh, a DSLR one with like, let's say a 2018 or something, you know, mm -hmm. there's a difference there, man. You know, that's again, high end, low end. Um, but for the most part, one thing people like, which I found very weird to like about a camera like, you know, a DSLR or a mirrorless is like, because we can shoot things like F4, F8, we can get everything like crispy, crazy sharp, especially if you focus right. Because on the phones, since most of them have low apertures, they'll never really see that. So for them, it's different. So because it's different, it's more noticed and they don't really care about bokeh. I was watching this thing and I was like, yeah, you know. Because bokeh is like a thing where a lot of people like to just slap it on, throw it on anything. And sometimes it's not the case, man. But if you have your image and like, let's say you shoot a landscape, dude, exactly. let, let's be, let's be seriously. Let's be serious. A landscape shot on like F8, F11 
on a DSLR edit and everything is always going to be the landscape photo shot on an iPhone or something, just mainly because, you know, for that, the, uh, what's it called? That aperture is never going to help show as many details if you're trying to get foreground, background, all that stuff, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it matters. Um, the common audience, though, since they're here in the middle, they'll look at pretty much like, is it funny? You know, is it directed well? Um, obviously, when, when things look like they're shot through a potato, like, dude, you know, you know. But yeah. if you deliver that same type of quality through a DSLR and an iPhone, like, dude, it just matters the in-between, you know. Just like audio is a big thing for video, you know. Yep. A huge thing also. But yeah, like, you'll know, you'll know audio over professional equipment versus like an iPhone just from the listening experience will catch you very quick you know yeah and on and uh, I think the audio part like our listening is so much more advanced than any other part of our body that like we know just like little things that's why ASMR stuff is like so popular because it's the little oh, like those coffee things. beans I sent you yeah <laughs> yeah yeah before I ground, ground those beans oh. up it was I have a really, really big question, and this uh, I want to get into this. It's kind of controversial. Okay. But no, it's not that controversial. But since you're wearing <laughs> the Peter McKinnon hat, it's about him. Um, Go ahead. Recently, a uh, photographer asked, well, he, he commented, right? And he, he told me, he's like, yo, what did you think of Peter McKinnon's latest um, I'll edit your photos session? And he mentioned that he felt that he was, A, running out of ideas, B, his edits weren't that great, and three, that he's transitioning from, like, a photographer and paying attention to, like, the photography things to just being, like, a YouTuber that has to post content. Mm, so I was, like, more yes than no on all those things. But I wanted to hear like your viewpoint on it because it's true. Even if you look at his videos, right. on the first video, you know, he just posted his edits. But then when he did like the second round, he the first thing that he said was a disclaimer. Like, this is my edit style. If you don't like it, like leave or unsubscribe or, you know, get out. <laughs> so obviously there was some pushback from the community. Um, but what do you think about that? Huh, interesting. I mean, I'm... I don't know. I don't want to be as biased just because I'm wearing a hat, but um, I don't know, man. It's I appreciate his content. Like I'm, I'm yeah. looking for it. Like I'll watch it, and I like I appreciate everything that that he's doing. But there are some See, things mm -hmm. that are noticeable nowadays. Like, I'm okay. I'm gonna mention one. One that like why I could agree with what was being said is because I saw the um, the three video tricks that you can do like for vlogging. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that video, I felt like I kind of got like. You feel like you're going down memory lane. You feel well, like no, no, you've heard this before. Really, like, put much into it because the first two were the same trick. Oh, just, I know. And the last one was like keep you keep you by surprise. Then no, no, the last one like you just put the camera on top of the car and they drove away, and I was just like. I know what you mean. Yeah, I felt very very iffy on that video too. It was kind of catchy because like it was the last thing like he did, but I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you mean. So what, what's your your take on it? So I'll say this. I think um, over time, as people are on a social a social platform, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, whatever, I'm pretty sure everyone's going to have their moments of it seems like they're just doing this for the views, you know, for to keep up with a routine, you know. Um, I think someone that I've noticed before him is probably like Casey Neistat. Like to me, Casey Neistat's work now is nothing compared to what it was like a year or two years ago. And then that work from like a year or two years ago doesn't feel like what it was, you know, three, four years ago. Um, but again, I think it is valid. I'm not going to say it's not valid that there's certain videos that I see that it's like, you know, it feels a little more put out for the people versus like you did it. But I will say one thing that when I did watch that particular video, you said those couple tips I did not know, which, you know, True. nor did I yeah. think of. Exactly. That's one thing that I do like. And I think the last one was almost like a thing that it's something that everyone knows, but at the same time you overlook. So I think he just got away with it just by a little bit. But dude, um, I'll definitely give him props that in those videos, like he's trying to think like what the people don't know and what's not out there. Cause I don't think I've heard those tips anywhere, bro. So 
you know, I will say it is for the people, but that it still has a lot of good thought into it. And the yeah. last one, yeah, the last one I think works. So there's there's a lot of work that he puts out that I'm I am kind of up and down about. But then um, I was having this discussion the other day too. Is that there's a lot of stuff going on through. I think uh, for someone like that, there's definitely a uh, there is this priority, almost like it's a job, you know, which I don't blame them for because that's something that they they make their living off of. And I think through every creator's like mind, there is this this time that's like they don't know what to put out. But I do appreciate that in his efforts of putting things out, there's still things that keep me on my toes. They're different, you know. Yeah. Um. So so I know what you mean. I feel like it is put out for the people in certain cases. But I do like that even though it is, he's thinking in the back of the, his mind, like, what don't people really know? You know, so I, I appreciate it that it is, uh, let me reframe. I appreciate it that it is, you know, at least useful and different as opposed to just, you know, literally like, like you said, camera hacks or something. Like, I'm tired of seeing things that people put out. You know, like to me, a cop out is like certain videos of, you know, three tricks that dude, like everybody knows, you know, exposure, exposure triangle, things that everyone knows. Um, you know, so I think when it comes to the standpoint of him versus like a lot of other people, I, I definitely say he still keeps it genuine. Um, maybe it feels a little production-y, but I know it's not at the point where it's like, you know, like again, yeah. as a, as a, yeah, it's not just like, <laughs> so I'm awesome. really, I'm really sell out doing this just cause I need to. Cause I know he also does films and things like that. So, and I, I can tell by how a lot of people create things that it, it can take a while to put together something really good. So even though we have stuff, I think as an audience, if you appreciate the man and his work, you got to appreciate what he puts out. If it definitely still is different, that's good. Um, but dude, these people always catch you by surprise. They put projects out. They're working on so many things. Yeah. So I don't think we can really get mad because there's a lot of times where, especially myself, like you're in this position where things are just different. You know, like you're going through something. You just don't feel the creative vibe. And these people, at least they use it as like something to to keep them like as a motivation to post up, you know, Yeah. which I, ca I can't blame you. It's like going to a job every day and eventually you hate your job. But instead, this is the guy who doesn't like his job, let's say, but even though he does, you know, obviously, but like just as a comparison and always makes the best out of it. So even though, you know, he he's put out content and he's got like his uh, two minute Tuesdays, he's got this and that, like he's not giving us just like, here you go, you know, like boring this, whatever, keeps it fresh, keeps it alive, finds a way to keep it, you know, a new so i don't think necessarily in his point that he's like a uh that he's one of those creators at least not yet who knows that uh he's putting things out that it's just like you're changing you know if anything i think there's a lot of behind the scenes elevation going up with like production like we saw the red camera if you, if you follow yeah, him yeah, yeah. Of course. um so i'd rather that dude than a youtuber that's like all right here you go on wednesday this comes out and it's literally the same exactly. thing at least we know there's stuff in the works you know Sure. So yeah, man, I don't blame the man just because, again, I think everybody goes through something like that where it's almost like they put out work. And that's, again, back to the question of, like, who's the content for type thing, you know? But again, the fact that it's a little more unique in the videos that I think wouldn't be shows that at least the passion's there. And that's what gets people, man. Passion for things is is 100%. Anyone who talks with passion is it's great, man. I can listen to that forever. That's what podcast makes podcasts so amazing. Yeah, uh, because it's, you know? it's genuine. It's so authentic. You know, it's so authentic. I don't want to put yeah. someone on here that's like, yeah, I like taking photos. <laughs> the end. Yeah, exactly. I, don't, I, I definitely don't want to go that route. Like, oh, just because you got a clout or whatever, like you're going to be on here. Nah, if, you're, if your work is not up to par with like standards, <laughs> I don't care how many followers, I don't care how much like you're making, unless it's like, you know, because that's what I really want to get down. Like that's the point of this podcast too, is to... Actually, I want to expose creators. I want people to know the, pe the person behind the work and understand like what goes through our mind when we produce stuff so that they get to know us on a more personal level and not just yeah, touch our pixel. You know what I'm saying? Cause, like, oh, yeah, absolutely, man. Because like, even um, this other photographer, then, and he, mm -hmm. he has a certain like editing style. And for like most, like it might not be like the, let's say, the ideal ig but it's his style and when i see it like i know it's his style and i'm just like i'm all for it you know 
Because I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's just how art is, man. Yeah, I'm just like, that's your tones. That's how you know how you like it to look. So I'm like, I'm all for it. But like, if you compare it on like the 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 you know the broad spectrum of what I everybody yeah it does it's like oh well, you're being different you know what I mean <laughs> but I appreciate it so 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 much because I can tell like that's his style and of course when he does client work it's you know it's for the client but when this is personal work, oh, yeah. like it's all awesome. like you know forget everybody else like if you like it or you don't like it but this is like this is what I put out that's like you know Picasso Picasso just did it's the paintings, not asking other people. He just got it done. Um, True. So, and just a disclaimer on like Peter McKinn stuff. I think he's doing great. And you're right, like on the point where he is creating, um, still thinking like what's missing, what's not out there. Um, and of course, yeah, he is upgrading in like different productions and things like that. So I definitely, I do, you know, appreciate the work that he's putting out. And I do want to say for like everybody else that's listening is we really need to stop critiquing every little thing because let's say one video wasn't like up to standards, but like you would have not known what those standards were if you didn't put out 200 videos of the past year or whatever the amount was, you know? So it's like appreciate the whole process and then like just take it for what it is. You know, if it's just information, it's, you know, it's information, grab it. If, obviously if he's putting out like a full movie and you can tell like the production quality is low then you're like okay you <laughs> didn't put your heart into that movie you know but if right. he's doing a tutorial exactly. it really he could shoot it on his iphone and if the information is on point then we should take the information for what it is and like be grateful for that absolutely so, that's definitely yeah, one thing so then so, i see what you mean there you know we'll jump to kind of round up and stuff so what is what are you looking to do in the next few months? Like, what do you see your work or your collaborations or what are you really like focusing on that we can mm, That's expect? a good one, man. Yeah, so I think uh, as, as novice as it sounds, man, I think I'm still on that search on like really understanding lighting. I think that's probably one of my biggest weaknesses. Not that, you know, not that I don't know anything about lighting, but I think lighting is so important to just sculpt things, you know, give them dimension. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in the last couple months, more of the things I've been working on is like, if anything in the work I do is like really like color grading, editing, toning, like on my own now, finally based off like the people that I use as inspiration for, like, I have a lot of people that I look up to, or at least a good small handful that I really, really like their work, man. You know, obviously Peter McKinnon is one, even though I'm more into his cinematic looking work now over photography, yeah. just cause I feel like his photography, it is great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but his cinema to me is just bigger and that's actually another thing I'm considering getting into video um, but again I'm one of those critical people that I really want to master one thing before I do something else you know um, so video is a possible up there um, understanding really more lighting just because I know with the perfect lighting like we mentioned earlier dude you don't even need the best equipment you know and I want to be content with what I have I think I have a decent lineup of what I can use to make stuff that's that's really cool you know the tools are there it's just mastering how to use every every single tool there. And hopefully a travel, man. I think a travel somewhere, you know, I was, again, talking, um, just seeing where to go. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's meets, like there's a meet in Florida, um, California. I got a couple creative people out there that, you know, it's always good to link up with. Even here in the city, you know, there's always endless possibilities. Um, just a little bit more like linking in person, you know, because I've definitely met a good amount of people, I think, um, over the last year and change that – they're either people I talk to a lot on social media that in regards to like creating or mm -hmm. just people that have become my genuine friends because we're in the same interest field. And um, I think it's big, man. You'll, you can never have enough of the right friends. So I think I'll put that as number one because that will never die to always be on that constant discovering of those good people um, and surrounding yourself with those that they're better than you. I mean, it may not seem like a, a thing about me, but it's crazy how much an influence off someone else. Like, again, I'm wearing a hat of a person that I don't even know, but I really look up to his work and it's inspired by work. Imagine I am meet or work with someone who's tangible. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, for sure. So I think that's something that people also forget. You know, you yourself in the field that you're in, I know you got a lot of good people behind you. 
and I know those people are grateful. And that's exactly one of the things that I think people overlook that when you find really good people that, you know, you just got to really hold on, show you're there for it, support, um, work with them. Right. You know, and with that, you'll discover a lot of stuff that maybe I'm not even thinking myself, you know, like within that little pocket of what I want to get better with can expand so much and bloom, you know? Yep. This is, I know it's not the most technical from me, but it kind of spawns the technicalities afterwards. You know, the people wow. I work with, they'll show me like a lot of the things or sometimes I, I look from the outside in just really like knowing and seeing what they do and like stuff that I'm like, I want to make that mistake or I want to be like that, you know? So, so, that, that's um, definitely so like, it's big, man. Awesome. That's definitely, that's, I'm looking forward to that, to seeing that journey. But um, no, no, honestly, me, I think even in the creative space, meeting different creatives and working together is the I would say the one of the most rewarding but then also the most beneficial as growing in a creative as a creative because everyone that you meet like even like you know speaking to you like you know I admire your work and I've learned so much from the style that you use from you know the gear and how technical you are like you know at first it was like shocking because it wasn't my style but then like <laughs> as I know like why you go through and everything and I took a lot same thing with um with Manny, you know like Manny's style is completely different it's from different. our styles different, but when i see his work i'm just like if i try to emulate that it's not going to come out because exactly. it's, it's like he has that you know that urban vibe but he keeps it keeps it grungy fresh, but it's and also, clean and he also keeps it like very he has kind of a, uh i want to call it not like a retro but like a what photography was when it started Dude, he's got a film feel. That's it. Yeah, but it's like <laughs> he's got a film feel. It's um, you know, it's amazing, like how he puts the work. And of course, he focuses on subject, background, lighting, you know, color, and these things. But he does it in such a different way. Same thing with your know, friend with Elvis. You know, Elvis's work also is, is another thing that's evolving. He's he's always copying me. You know, so every time I do something, he's doing mm-hmm. it. So, <laughs> but again, but, that's what I'm saying right there, man. That little even though it doesn't seem like something, again, I think people in, in uh, some events, they get too selfish, man. And um, that's not a bad thing. You have to be selfish for certain things, but in a creative aspect, I think being selfish can definitely hold you back. Um, it's not necessarily relying on people, but just, you know, being able to, to get input from what they're doing, what they're not doing. And again, if someone's either quote unquote copying you or, you know, in a sense like, oh, that looks cool, let me try that. You know, that's something that if you didn't know that person, follow that person, pay attention to that person, you didn't venture it. And you could be good. You could be bad at it. But you'll learn through that. And I think uh, people is a number one thing that they're more than a tool. They're like, oh, dude, it's calling people tools is, it just doesn't sound good. But but they're definitely like a, resource, uh, like a resource. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's the perfect word, man. People are great resources that can spawn so many things out of it. And again, it seems like a corny answer to say, but um, I do think that a lot of the growth comes from people like, you know, like they always say, if you want to be rich, you hang around rich people, you know, it's stuff like that, you know, so you want to be around people that are better, um, learn from people that are better. And again, that's probably my number one under lighting and just, you know, travel. Um, But I think that itself, dude, the, the road for that is endless, just like on what can be created or what can be avoided. You know, sometimes it's great to learn through people instead of on your own before you get into that situation, good or bad. Of you course. Know? And then, of course, you got to take the leap in, in your own move. You know, like, obviously, big props to you now that you're in Puerto Rico doing your thing. You know, um, I'm sure you're, you know, looking outside. <laughs> we all feel that we wish we were in Puerto Rico. But, um, you know, that change in environment, atmosphere, again, with those people, think about it. Would you move to Puerto Rico if you were in New Jersey if you weren't with, your, you know, your people? Nope. Exactly. You know, so again, just a, a big product of something so little, just, just talking to somebody, man, talking to someone, having someone in your group, again, super big, I think, overlooks that people, they know, but they don't really like know, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's one of those like, yeah, it's, that's it. It's like they know, but then they don't know how impactful like it can be, for sure. So definitely, yeah, I want to on you know everything that you find out about like lighting and, and color and all this stuff like keep us updated so we can learn with you <laughs> like at least post in, you know in, in your stories and that way we can like you know cause oh, yeah. I I'm always, available. always available on instagram always available on twitter um if anyone has my number you always be able to text me i mean i'll gladly answer some people want help for stuff like i'm not the one to be like you know be gone peasant so because i'm yeah. still growing as well 
Um, so I'll definitely give my feedback. And honestly, that's another thing, man. That's probably a subcategory of the first thing on my list is just um, people giving feedback, just blatantly honest, bro. You know, I'll, I'll straight up, I'll tell you all the time. Oh, yeah. You know, I noticed this, I noticed that. Just because, again, the people I look up to, I know they really know and they get into the production of what they're talking about. So I'm like, hey, Manny, you know, how come this is at this or this is at that? Or you should do this or you should do that. And, you know, you give me your, your reasoning for it. I'm like, dude, you know, do this, look into this. Like, you know, all those things that are just really minimal details that you can add on that they'll add, like, so much more of an impact, you know, in, in production. Of course. No, man, every, every, every critique you've given me, like, I take it 100% and I look into it and I learn from it. And Because I think that's another thing, too. As a creative, like, everybody, everybody, I say that they hold their work so dear because it's so personal that whenever somebody says something about it, like you just want to attack it. It's like, what you say about my colors? So many times I've I pointed things out that <laughs> some people do, they, they don't take it the right way. And I, I understand because through, that's one thing that I learned from a close friend that texting can be a, or like messaging through the words, excuse me, can be like an evil or like a, a, up in, a seesaw thing, man. It's a coin flip. Like, you could take it the wrong way. You could take it the right way. I think that's why the use of like emojis, you know, LOLs, like, dude, I, I always do certain things to make sure the tone is light, you know, if I can't speak to you. Um, but some people do, they just take it the wrong way. They think you're like attacking them. But at the same time, I guess at the end of the day, that's them, man. Cause you gotta take in feedback and just really be, you know, ask yourself like, is it true? Is it this? Even if you're not going to change who you are, that's not what anyone's ever making you do. Just acknowledge that you know like all these people i see like especially um celebrities quote unquote celebrities or big people online that people critique them like we said we were having this whole peter mckinnon thing where like some people think that his work is going one way like those are things that himself if he reads comments and stuff that's probably why he acknowledged it like you said in the beginning of the, the video to take that in and just be like am i am i you know like instead of like screw you guys you know like just really really sit back and think because sometimes if you hear something about yourself enough it might just be true, man. Or if not, maybe there's always a little truth somewhere, you know? So it's just like, just really learning how to take in the, the best and the worst, but in the best way, no matter what, you know? For sure. It's just how it is, man. Uh, I, I wish people would critique me more and just let me know. Because every time they do, like, at first I'll get like a little bit offended just because of the time that I put out into it. But then I know for the next one, it's definitely going to reflect that and it's going to just be better. So... Yeah, man. It's the only Everybody way to elevate because, again, it's social media. So I feel like anything that's out there, dude, you can't take these things in a, in a bad way and let it ruin your day, man. Like you're in a, on a platform that's meant to be on a platform. That's why sometimes I don't understand pages that are hidden, blocked, um, you know, especially if they're promoting stuff. Like, dude, this is social media. You know? Yeah. Like, like I get it. I get it. Comment on it. Like, I get it that you might expect hate through this and that, but maybe think about it. What are you doing there? What are you doing that to project that type of opinion? And I'm not saying to bend for those people, but you know what? If you do what you do, again, who are you posting it for? You know, if you're posting out there and you get all these comments and all these hates or these thumbs downs on YouTube, whatever, I mean, the people that keep posting videos all the time, they know you can't please everybody, man. That's just how the world works. You know, so you have to really get that and accept that when you put it out there, as long as you're content with it, again, doing it for you whatever feedback you're going to get, just know that feedback's based on, you got to be hundred percent set. I like this. It's out there, mm -hmm. you know, and then you'll take that content. If you take it down, that's how you know it's not for you. you know? Yeah. But sure. if not, if you're just like, you know, in the comments actively, like, thanks for the feedback. I don't think so. Blah, blah, blah. You know, just, just talk about it. That's like yeah. a space to talk about and be social. Be social. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's it, man. Some people are so, so weird, you know, like at that point, I don't know. There's people that care about more likes and like, please get my photo to this many likes. Like, dude, if they didn't the first time, like, why do you want the fake love? You know, or yeah. just be like, instead, just be like, you know, check this out. Um, I don't know. Send it to like creative people that you like instead. Like, you have an audience that follows you because they like your photos. If they don't like that photo, I don't think there's a real reason to push it super, super hard. You know, like this whole topic of like people who should support more people. Dude, people are gonna support you for a reason. If they're not supporting you, I mean, it's up to you. You either change if you feel like that you want to be for them or you keep being you, man. You're going to get the you people. I'd rather get the me people than a bunch of the people that are not me, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what gets you really great friends, really great connections. For sure. So let me get, I want to get one last question in. Um, also, another funny thing that I've been noticing on social media is those 
creative photos of, that everybody does, like, you know, like the trend. Everybody follows the trend. So one of the recent ones is like the model lying on the floor with like fruit on her face, like <laughs> a watermelon or a raspberry. Like, what, what, what do you think is going on there? Because I've talked to a few photographers and it's just like, we're like up to here with. Bro, we were just talking about that last night and then it ends up to photos of tortillas on your face and eggs in your face. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's hilarious. But, uh, dude, I mean, again, I don't see anything wrong with it. It can be annoying. I think, honestly, I don't care if people do that, if they're laying on the floor, if they're taking photos with this and that, as long as in my taste it comes out dope. And, of course, when those people put it out, just like any other content they're putting out, I guess they think it's dope. And you know what, bro? Some people got it, some don't. And I think if you, if it's a trend and you want to give it a go, it's up to you. Like for me, if I give it a go, I'm going to try my best to execute it to my liking. And you know, cause trends are all, they're always good to, I always tell people like, if you really want to get like social media based and you're, you're serious, serious, you want to ride the wave when it's there, you know? So if the fruit thing is the wave and some people have like, have, you know, made their whole IG accounts on like for neon lights, things like that. I mean, do you it's annoying to see when it's done wrong i don't appreciate I, I appreciate anything that's out there that's done right i don't care if you got a watermelon in your face or an orange covering your eye if like <laughs> tones are dope it looks super sharp you know but it's i just don't appreciate it when it's dumb and it looks bad that's it yeah but that's just my my opinion on on what looks good what looks bad you know who's to say so that was I, a, I, you know that was my same take on it because i was like you know i, I told the person i was coming to with and i'm just like don't get me wrong that edit is dope <laughs> the photo is on point, the sharpness is there, the colors are there, but it's like, I understand if if somebody's in an, next to an orange tree and they have an orange, or you are in a raspberry field and you got raspberries on your face, like, or something, you know, it's like, like yeah, when it's done, I, I know what you're saying. When it definitely done, feels right, like, you can tell it's done right. When it's forced, it's like, yeah. it's forced, it's like, okay. Really, what loops in the in the in the milk in the bathtub again? Like, come on now. Ah, uh, yeah, I've seen that so much. And I I don't understand. Like, who does that? Who puts milk in a bathtub? I don't know where. How much That's money? A lot of milk. Milk ain't, milk ain't cheap. Yeah. That's a lot. Uh, what, I think also some people just dye water with something. I I don't know. I've heard there is an alternative on like some milk, but then like you know making it so you can make that effect more without actually having a bunch of milk in there. There's like something else. Yeah. I mean, I know what you mean. That one is probably my least favorite. There's certain some people that they'll pull it off and it takes the right model, right setting, right theme. Everything kind of has to talk, you know, to each other for it. Like you were just saying, like, I understand if you're like in a, a field of raspberries and you get raspberries. Um, but again, I think to some degree, like, I think subject minimal gives a bigger impact for those things. Like if you're like, let's say just holding an orange straight out, you got bokeh coming on, you know, yeah. you got this little like, like a color sequence that like goes with like orange you know like uh, complementing colors and stuff i think you can make it dope and sometimes that really random object that doesn't belong there adds like that much more like of emphasis to a photo but i know what you're saying there's definitely ways that it just gets weird but then again there's a lot of art out there and most art if you go to museums it's either very simple very crazy that you just think well i can do that you know some abstract stuff and it goes deeper than that the question is do I really believe that the creator who made that is trying to portray that? Or they're just really, they're just like, oh, you know, let me just do something random. Everybody's doing it. I think there's a difference, but you'll know exactly. based off the photo, yes. you know? That's so I, that, again, that's when I appreciate if it's done well, and that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be done a certain way, like raspberries and a raspberry peel, but just like how it's executed. Like, dude, I, I wouldn't mind if I followed an account that just had fruit on a desk, but like the desk is like a certain mahogany or like it's like looks aged and the texture is there. Or like, even if it's like on a band, like imagine just having like an apple at the Apple store. There Someone taking a photo of an, of an actual apple at an Apple store. I don't think I've seen that. Someone wants to steal that, that idea I just came up with, but it would fit even though it doesn't fit. You know what I'm saying? Cause obviously the Apple store is just all very simple. All tablets, all phones, all computers. So the Apple actually looks like the Apple logo and it's just like. Damn. Line it up to the logo, something like yeah. that, you know, it makes sense but it's still technically a fruit in a random place, you know? But it's it's very intentional and you can see oh, yeah. the creator's process behind it. Yeah, so I think the I think it comes down to it. Like if that person posts that photo of something obscure and I look at their feed and I'm like, nothing is like what they're posting, 
it's different. You start to wonder what the person goes through or if they don't express it to their people, you know, like there's some people that just never express what they're going through. And I think as a, as an artist on any plateau, people want to know what you're thinking or what went down, like, like on a podcast like this, you know, to, um, to just really understand the work beforehand, just to know, like, when he put it out, he put it out. And like, I know what this guy is like going through, or I, I, I can appreciate the type of person this is. It helps link the work together. Again, exactly. like a good example, a good example is my boy. He's, he's working on like a little project and uh, we're going to put, you know, some images together for it. We got pretty much all the tracks laid down. I'm super hyped. But one thing is uh, when we were in the car one time listening to a set track, he explained really how it went on in the studio, what went on through his head, the emotions he went on, who the song was about. And I think with that, when I first heard the song, I, can, I could have played it like 10 times. I liked it, but it was just like, I liked it. But now that I know what went on through his head process, like I feel it, you know, and I yeah. think it's more of an impact now. So that's where I think like interviews play really big for certain artists too podcast itself you know things like that um so yeah man i think the intention behind the shot really really would justify if i like it or not and that trust me i, I know what you mean everything can be kind of annoying <laughs> but yes. but again i think if you just do it right there's just certain elements that especially if you feel that person's touch in there that it'll resonate better than it just feels like okay i don't understand what's going on there's a a watermelon in front of her nose and an apple in front of her eyebrow <laughs> <laughs> you know? like she's covered with like a veil of fruit yeah. like like you said at a market i'd like it but it just depends on you oh, know the intention and some people really know their style is very like based on manipulating or like really knowing how to finesse an image so when they take that on i appreciate it because i'm like you're, they're using their skill set towards it and as opposed to someone that i just don't know what you were trying to do yep. you know so either the image shows this is what you were trying to do or i know you as the artist and I know what goes on through your mind, which that's what these avenues are good for stories, Instagram live podcasts. Um, but this way, just like people that you see in museums, bro, like you see a, a blank, whatever, or like a very simplified or crazy painting or mural. You just want to know, like once you know about the artist and what they went through their life, they're, they're, like you really see that expression come out more, you know, in like the content you're viewing. So I think if you're going to do it, you know, if you're going to be the fruit guy, <laughs> just like, I'd like to see, let's Let say, like why. behind the scenes. I'd like to see the behind the scenes, the thought process. Just that's just me personally. Um, just to really appreciate that, because if not, I think to the average person, it's just like, what are you doing? You know, that's that's <laughs> like, a good. I saw, that's a good I saw one point where you do like for, crack the egg over a woman's face. It's just hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> but that's a good point for like for our creatives and everyone listening. Like the story and the person behind the work, I think, is more important than the work itself, because if I follow somebody as a creator, I do appreciate their work, but I appreciate the one doing the work. So I yeah. know their story. I know where they're coming from. I know their struggles. I know their creative process. So that's why even if I see something, it could be like mediocre or not up to par, but because I know them, I'm like, all right, I know what he went through to get there. And I know what his thought process and like what's affecting it, you know? Right. But I think that's important. Yeah. Well, the creatives, you got to, we got to tell the story behind it. You know, even like Again, what you mentioned about the social songs. media. <laughs> no, you like even with the music. Like I don't know if uh, I use Spotify, and there's the like the genius lyrics that'll come up, and it'll give you the lyrics, but it'll give you like the context. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah, I love it. That's one of my favorite things to use on Spotify. Yeah. So when I see that, and I'm just like, I love the song that much more because I know who he's talking about, what he's talking about, where it comes from, the reference, and the behind story. So when I'm listening to it, it's like, I'm it's there so with hype. Yeah. It's so hype. But the story, I think, is, is the most important thing because, like you said, social media, be sociable, like, interact, let people know. And it's the same thing, like, even with, like, a friendship, like, you're friends with people who, you like their story. You like their story, their Absolutely. personality, where they're coming from, like, it doesn't have to be the most interesting, but it's just interesting enough to you. you Dude, know? and it's crazy because that can definitely have the flip effect too. There's some people that on social media, they're amazing. And I meet them in person. I'm like, dude, you're so Flat dry. Out. You're so, yeah, you're so like, I don't know, like. Land. But again, yeah. And don't get me wrong. Maybe that's just their channel that they express everything through. But like, I don't know. I figured you express something. I think it's healthy to learn how to vocally 
like try to express in your work, you know, things like that. So I don't know, maybe that's just me. But again, I think uh, I established this the other day too, that all artists, whatever you are, there's always something a little out of the norm that I think plays a factor in them being always like the best, you know, like whether it's music, whether it's shooting photos, the hardships, just, you know, the what they're going through, be, like now, presently, whether it's good or bad, their type of friends. Um, there's a lot of factors to play into, man. But I definitely, again, probably a subsection of the first thing that it's on my list, um, being social on social media. I think that's the, the best thing ever, man. And if you, if you don't do it, and especially in a creative field, that's, dude, you, that's like a non-negotiable. You have to, you have to, at least for growth, either for yourself or for your page, um, you really, it's, dude, it's like free, you know, it's, it's really the most, the best free resource you have. Yeah. everybody around you you just know being you. And also just being you yeah a lot of people like even like you said right you're wearing a hat somebody you never met but because you appreciate their work it's because you resonate with that person on some personal level that you want to support and you just think that they're dope and you want to share something in common and like that's where the true following comes in that's where you have your you know and you want to call them fans I, I, it's more like friends from afar because true probably be like mad cool if they just live closer or you know what i mean uh, but i think yeah definitely that like that personality and just like being you and expressing yourself out there like that's what really brings people in because there's some people i follow because i like how they look you know what i mean True. like I, I just i don't know he has a cool face or he has cool hair or <laughs> whatever you know or like his laugh is like awkward or something like whatever it is but like I don't like it. So I'll keep following because I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss the next sure. time his hair looks cool or, you know, the next time he does that weird laugh or like whatever it is, but like, it won't even have to be about the work, but it's really like about the person. So I think we need to, the creators need to get more into their work and attach themselves to their work and stop being like this awkward behind the screen, non-existent, like, try to manifest themselves through artwork like no dude you're a person and you use a tool whether it's a canvas whether it's a dslr whether it's just a beat pad anything. a microphone anything. yeah whatever it is like but you are more important than the tool that's being used and that's something that like um i appreciate elvis is work for because he always mentions like right now he's just using a certain tool to share his process and his ways you know that tool at the beginning could be photo the tool now could be video it could be a different tool later but he's still him so no matter what tool oh, yeah, he's using true. i'm still going to follow his work you know if he goes into basketball or baseball or something like i'm still roll with it because it's out it's him you know so definitely creators need to get more into their work and expose themselves because they they are their brand they are their work and even if their work is trash and it's like whatever but companies will hire you they will pay you because it's Dude, you yeah. you know? i've seen time and time that there's people that i'm just like people pay for this and That's sometimes right. it, again like you said it's it's just how you present yourself how you market it and maybe the person that is really delivering the work is greater than the work just at this present time so a lot of companies see potential a lot of people see potential you know um, and it's true, man. Sometimes, like myself, I feel like I'm always on a constant, like, trying to grow, trying to do better, trying to learn more techniques and things to produce better images when it's done. But I know along the way, like, I'm not the best, but I can almost talk like the best. You know, like, you talk yeah. with the confidence of, like, you know what you want to do. You just really want to get to it. And I just love the fact that for some people, you can feel that they're there. It's just not unlocked, you know? that's probably the best especially when they start putting out things it's like a lot it's like Oof, let's go man this is it this is the come up Mother. you know it's a, yeah it's like <laughs> i'm exposed but, exactly so um, gem so that thing. people can get to know you more first of all where did the name gem come from i never heard the story so, uh, the story that that's very that's told ever so often bro so uh, back in high school we used to do graffiti well we as in people that i was associated with before myself um i naturally got into it just like how many people get into trends things going around things of interest 
I always liked things as far as taking photos, um, things that just to me were aesthetically like so nice. Mm -hmm. And I resonated that with graffiti too. Like in the beginning stages, just like when anyone starts anything, you're bad at something, you're good at something. But something about graffiti is definitely in my interest. Trust me, there's a lot of stuff in high school that I stayed away from because it was not me at that time mm -hmm. or it was not me ever. Um, but graffiti was one. So with that, if people aren't too familiar to the graffiti category, um, every graffiti artist has a tag tag alias, a name, yeah, a tag name, uh, something they go by, you know. And for us in high school, there was so many names that went around from either big people that were in New Jersey, people in school already. Because one thing is like you never want to have the same name as someone else. It's like a whole, whole beef thing. You know? It's a whole yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, uh, so because so many names were taken, we just tried to figure out, you know, what to have me like as a, as a graph name would be, you know, there was a couple things that we, a couple names we went through, um, just putting certain letters together. Cause fun fact in graffiti, a lot of letters, they kind of resonate the same. Like the names are never like, it's never about how cool the name is. It's about how cool, simple the name can be minimal. But like before that is like, how creative can you make those letters in that name? So like common mm -hmm. things like the vowels, most of the vowels are pretty easy to do. C is a big thing. <clears throat> Mine is actually very difficult fun fact because the letters G, the letters M, they're not really used too often in a graffiti name. You normally see, yeah. if anyone pays attention, there's certain letters that people try to make words out of. Um, we kind of just did gem, I don't know. It was just kind of came in a lunch table conversation. Um, I was always the way I was around a certain type of people for interest that I liked sharing things, giving my opinions for it. Um, you know, so a lot of people said I would talk a lot of real stuff. So it kind of resonated with my name, you know, that- gems. Right, dropping gems. Yeah, dropping gems, dropping gems. Man. So, you know, about a lot of stuff, no matter what it is, man, I just, if it's a, it's a good conversation, I got people passionate that make them love good points about it. Like all those conversations that we're not supposed to talk about, that's like things that just have never ending, they're opinionated. I just really love expressing my opinion and really hearing you and like how we can go back and forth, you know, in the conversation for stuff like that. Sure. Um, so yeah, man, that's kind of how I got my name. I did graffiti for a while. I have a pretty good hand, hand script and style. Um, not something I do anymore, just because now I've I kind of switched hobbies as time has gone by. I've gone through graffiti, I've gone through comic books, I've gone through um, sneakers. Sneakers one of my, my biggest ones. Um, collecting certain things. Like once I get into something, dude, I I really try to be good yeah. at it. So photography yeah. has gotten gotten that little like flavor of it. Um, you know, so for a hobby, just stuff to do. Um, but yeah, man, that's pretty much how I got the name. Just yeah. kind of stuck. And most of my close friends, they'll pretty much refer to me as that. Because especially in high school, if you knew, you knew. Like, I almost don't even have a real name. And because of that, I use it as my social media handle just for a lot of stuff. I incorporate it, incorporate it to, like, the email email name. Um, just because it's, it's catchy, you know. And it's it turned works. into, like, yeah. who I am, you know. And honestly, like, the way people say why I got it, like, what they think. You know, again, they think it's just because of the way I talk. But again, in graffiti, sometimes and most of the time, you don't really give yourself your own name. It's really given to you. Yep. yep. So I guess I'm a product of uh, people for that, <laughs> at least in that certain uh, it's the, time. It's the same thing happened with me. Actually, a lot of people don't know, like, you know, why people call me Supermanny, but that was actually my breakdancing name. So I didn't know that. There you go. So that's where, like, that came from. And it's not really because Superman is my favorite superhero, but just, like, it fit, you yeah, know, it kind of that. that's what I assumed it was, honestly. <laughs> also, <laughs> so that's why, yeah, it's why it kind of like fit. And then most people, you know, obviously my full name is Emmanuel, but most people just automatically resonate with Manny. So whether I know Please. you for years or for a day, like you're gonna end up calling me Manny, and I'm just like, all right, yeah, so at least like a childhood it. nickname type thing, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, at least let me make it more personal. Everybody knows me by Manny, so now everybody just calls me Super Manny, and it's like now it transitions to like my artist name but it wasn't because of that it was actually like that was my breakdancing name from like with my crew and like but that's again <laughs> the thing is you got your name in a creative space that's how a lot of stuff happens yep you know your name kind of comes from you trying to do something and again i think a lot of people like i'm a strong believer that you should have something in your life that you're passionate about and creative about no matter what it is whether it's it doesn't even have to be your your job per se but just something that you really like resonate hard with you know and i think that's where a lot of those people's names and nicknames come through like dj names obviously come from people djing like i know one of my boys mm -hmm. is uh, really dope um for artists you know sometimes it's like your nickname mixed with like a little creativity and your expression and it just comes out you know but i think in a creative space um 
it's it's definitely something that a lot of people they, they almost never have their actual name <laughs> you know it's it's funny they get known as something else um but yeah i think uh everyone should have a little bit of that just because i think it's what makes everyone unique you know like everyone pretty much does the same thing you know we all go to work we all eat food you know we all do we all have set things that we all have done that we share in common but i think all those things that we really want to express we want to you know show through images through video i think that's what's going to make this different i don't care dude i don't care if you knit i don't care if you dj i don't care if you sew i don't care if you like make knives whatever it is like as long as behind it it's like something outside the box you know yep. and that that your fun isn't the same fun as everyone else's you know well, that's Some people what, love that's... to go to libraries love to go to museums like dude I'm, I'm down for anything that's gonna teach me and maybe even help inspire me within it you know and i think people like yeah. that are amazing well, that's what they say like um i have one i don't know quote or saying or teaching that like impacted me a lot is that everybody should have three hobbies or three things that they love to do one of them should be for work one of them should be as a creative outlet and the other one should be just to relax. True. You know what I mean? That's so if you have like those, or no, no, the other one is, is not creative outlet. It's um, for exercise purpose. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so exercise for like the body. And then the last one, which is the relaxed and creative side. So it's like those three things. It's, I think it's important because if you have a hobby that you're making money off of, then you can sustain your living. You know, if you have a True. hobby that you can, exercise and work out then you're going to remain healthy healthy mindset and then the last one as a creative outlet or to relax is just to like balance everything out so i think that creativity in the most minimal sense whether it's you know cooking baking knitting like you said like even reading like whatever that is if they do it right or if they just do it you know definitely it's it leads to a much more fulfilling like lifestyle i think Oh, that's dope. Yeah, no, that, that's actually a very, a very good, good point, man. That's one of those quotes I'll definitely remember. And I feel like any quote, if you really think about it, that you do remember comes from someone that does something that's not of the norm, typically, you know, or they're like that person, you know, whether they're a motivational speaker, an artist, whatever it may be, man, a, a song lyric, you know, it's always comes from people that are doing things that are labeled as extracurricular, creative, or, you know, artistic. It never comes from your plain Joe you know exactly i don't think i remember a, a quote from a plain joe but i'll tell you one thing that uh one quote that's always stuck with me that's come from my barber actually and again cutting hair it's not like something everyone does you're yeah. only some people whether you're nice you know um just something you're passionate about doing like i can only imagine being a barber and giving someone like an ill fade you know like that would be that just that just has that good feeling you know yeah but um but that quote dude that my barber told me it was it's always stuck with me and he always said that there's like kind of three phases that you go through in, in anything um, in life. And especially when it comes to like, you know, making something or doing something or like a craft, it's uh you know, the journey of yourself. It's like, you find yourself, you define yourself and you refine yourself in life, you know? Sure. And uh, it's catchy because it rhymes, but like, it's very true, man. You know, you find something, you try to figure out what it, what it is exactly. And you, you make that you. And then later on, you just polish up what you're a hundred percent sure on, you know? And the time frame for it is always endless, but that's a quote, dude, that I think uh, will never leave that. Oh, I never realized it, but it's actually a pretty good guideline for like interests of, you know, when to have those particular extracurricular activities, interests, hobbies. So, yeah, man. And like I said, right here, just things like this definitely express those things that you never would have known. And again, just a person as a resource, you know? Yep, for sure, for sure. So, John, before my internet like kicks me off and starts acting weird, where can people find you on social media? Uh, all right. So biggest thing, if you want to find me, you just look at me on Instagram at shot by gem. So shot as in taking a photo by as in of someone and G E M as in the stone. And uh, from there, I mean, I pretty much have everything else linked uh, on Twitter. I believe I'm the exact same handle and I'm trying to expand, man. There's a lot of photo apps that I really want to dive into and see what's up from there. Um, but that's usually on Instagram is where I live just for stuff, just because I really like seeing what people put out. I like critiquing for myself, like knowing like if I did that, what I would have mm -hmm. done different. Uh, but that's the biggest man from there. You can hit me up and we can expand from there. You can text me, obviously, if you hit me up, you can email me if you want to do that. Slide uh, in the DMs. Slide in DMs. Uh, I'm always available, you know, when it comes to questions of people who want to talk about things like this. Cause, and that's why I try to hit up some people and I appreciate their time if they, um, so yeah, I, you know, um, follow me through IG is going to be the main source and everything from there. If it works out in the near future, that's where we'll be, you know. Perfect. 
So even though you dropped a lot of gems, <laughs> a lot of good points, what would be if there's one piece of advice from a creative to creator that you would love to see people implement more or do more of or just keep in mind, what would that be? Uh, I think it goes back to the topic we talked about and a little bit further. I think the biggest thing I would like to see is more genuine collaborations between people that want to make something greater than what they do. So, you know, maybe working on a conceptual project instead of just being together and taking photos, more thought behind it. Um, that's, that's really one of the main things that I'd like to see, honestly. Um, damn, I was thinking there was something else attached to that just now that like escaped my head. But honestly, that's the, that's the biggest point, man. And, you know, just really, oh, here we go. So just like an artist itself, because I used to be very into like I said, graffiti. And um, I, because of that, I subsectioned into like a lot of mm -hmm. stuff like painting and everything. Just looking into it, big thing is always do the work to where you're content. Leave it alone for a while. Could be a day, a couple days. And then come back and like really think about it. Like, do you like where you're at? Do I want to make some changes? Like looking at it with a new eye. I feel like that's something that, in art, like I'm one of those people, especially that I want to work on something and I want to get it done in that moment. You know, like I really can't wait to post it up, especially if I'm super excited about something. Um, but I realize that, you know, again, like when you scroll on your feed later on, just be the guy in the future, just in the moment, you know, instead of like having to scroll through your feed later and be like, Oh, I should have changed that. Like, just go back to that photo tomorrow before you post it and be like, do I really like this? You know, and just kind of like making sure when you put it out, that you're hundred percent that you want it out there. Cause again, once it's out there, it's out there. Um, you know, so I guess just double checking stuff to make sure, make sure you're good on top of, uh, everything. I think that's one little tiny tip and tool that everyone, again, one of those things that you know, and some people just don't do that before the content's posted, it could just elevate it. Cause you make those final touches and everything. Sure. thus giving us better stuff out there, you know? So I think that's a really big tip that, um, I, I'm sure some people do hundred percent, but like, I, I can almost say for certain that everyone's probably guilty of not really waiting. Like once they're settled, they're settled, you know? Um, and again, it's not to please the audience in that moment. It's just more thinking to yourself, like, am I good with this? Like, do I, do I feel like I could have, cause sometimes when you stare at something so long, you just don't know, you know, you get used like to that, it. Yeah. You, just, yeah, you know, right? you get like a, you get like a creator's block shout out to Elvis, you know? Um, <laughs> so yeah. things like that, you know? For sure. No, so definitely does. Thank you for sharing that. So those are the two tips. The one is to link up, right, with creators, link up more, come up with ideas together, be more collaborative, um, on like a real sense of collaboration, not just oh let's meet here and let's see what happens, but like yeah, real sense, ideas. you know, some uh, some conceptual projects, you know, just everybody trying to elevate from what they have. Perfect, bro. And then the second one, which is something that I need to practice is... Almost like proofreading your work in a sense, you know? Proofreading, Give yeah. it some time, you know, go back to go it, to sleep. see how you really feel about it. Yeah, go to sleep, it's watch much. a movie, watch somebody that inspires you, um, you know, just do anything, take a nap, man, you know, just go out for the day, like, just get refreshed, you know, get, get, get started again, almost as if your photo edit from where you left off is a new photo, you know, and just be like, do I like it how it is? Is it, is it good? Like, Oh, I missed this that I didn't see, you know, because, you know, your, your eyes just get tired. You're on the screen so long. Of course. Uh, it's a big thing, man. Big thing. Awesome. So, Jim, I want to thank you so much. You're actually the first, and you're definitely going to be a returning guest <laughs> um, for joining straight. the Super Creators Podcast. And um, just to let everybody know, like, not only do I want to make this interaction as kind of video audio, um, but I also want to start doing more of, like, a day in the life or behind the scenes with different creators. So next time I'm in town, we're gonna take a day out and go through a creative process and just kind of like really dive into who Jim is as a creator and also showcase that. Cause I think that's, that's really the part, uh, that's the reason why I started the podcast is cause I want to really take a day and follow somebody else's work and show that process. And like, I feel like that's gonna be the missing, the missing piece to connect um, everything that we're talking, everything that they're saying, and seeing the work come out live. So absolutely, man. Guys, come, out the come with you to to you with that. You're not shying away. You're gonna be in front of my camera all day. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely gonna, you know, we're gonna collaborate and make something. You know, work ready, better. Maybe, maybe I'll see you in Puerto Rico. Who knows? Hey, either way, I'm trying to I'm trying to get out to New Jersey as soon as I can to at least just like touch base with everybody. 
But if not, yeah, come to the Puerto Rico. There's amazing locations here to create, and it's a I can only imagine, man. So, Jim, again, thanks so much. I think this was supposed to be like 30 minutes. I think we went like an hour and something. Yeah, but true. It was, I can tell because my AirPods are dying. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but it was definitely amazing. And again, thank you for taking out the time. And everybody, follow him. Shot by Jim on IG, and then yeah, you can branch out from me from there. DMs, man. and you'll find them everywhere else. And I'm Henry again, signing off, and I'll see you on the Instagram. Yeah, man. See you on the flip side. Peace. Peace.